Temporal dead zone. When you hear these words for the first time, you might imagine a barren wasteland, devoid of greenery and life. Or, if you have recently watched Tenet, you might think this is a title of Christopher Nolan's new movie. After all, the word temporal sounds like something to do with time, and Nolan loves making movies about time. However, in reality, this is a concept from your most favorite programming language. Yes. I am talking about JavaScript. To start things, Temporal Dead Zone, also known as TDZ, is a concept applicable to variables declared using let or const keywords. By the end of this video, you will be knowing everything about JavaScript's Temporal Dead Zone and how you can avoid falling into one. If you have still not pressed the subscribe button, then what are you waiting for? You seriously don't want to miss any upcoming videos on CS Tracker. So, what really is the temporal dead zone? To understand the concept, it is better to begin with an example. Look at this console.log statement within a set of curly braces. If we simply execute this single file of JavaScript, we are going to get a reference error. The variable greeting message is not defined. The message itself is pretty self-explanatory. JavaScript has no clue about this variable. We never declared it in our program. Sorry JavaScript, we will make amends. Let us tweak our program a little bit. After the console.log statement, we declare another variable and call it just name. Then we declare the greeting message and initialize it with a simple text message. And finally, we log the greeting message along with the name variable, just a basic concatenation. This time again, we get an error. And that too on the very first line of the program. But this time, there is a difference. The error message says, cannot access the variable greeting message before initialization. If you remember, the previous message was that the variable is not even defined. So what does this signify? It signifies that even though we have declared the variable greeting message on the third line, JavaScript is actually aware of its presence right from the beginning. However, since we have not initialized greeting message or declared it, we are not able to access the variable before that happens. In other words, the variable greeting message is in the temporal dead zone. To summarize, the temporal dead zone starts at the beginning of the scope, in this case the first line after the curly braces, and ends at the line where the variable is finally declared, the third line in our case. Having said that, it is also important to note that the temporal dead zone depends on the order of execution rather than the order of position in your source code. Let us look at another program. Here we have a function say greeting. Its only job is to log the contents of the variable greeting message to the console. Outside the function definition, we declare and initialize the greeting message variable and then call the say greeting function. What do you think will be the output of running this program? There will be no error. In fact, the program will work absolutely fine and greeting message is displayed. At first glance, it may have looked like greeting message is inside the temporal dead zone when we use it within the say greeting function. However, the order of execution matters. The say greeting function is called after the greeting message is declared. This means that when the function is actually executed, the greeting message variable is already out of the temporal dead zone. Therefore, no errors from the program. Now that we have understood the meaning of temporal dead zone, it is time to look at some interesting cases that emerge because of TDZ and lexical scoping. As you may already know, JavaScript follows lexical scoping, meaning a variable may only be referenced within the block of code where it is declared. However, this leads to some special situations when we use var and let together. Look at this first example. We have a function called increment. It has a counter variable declared using var. If the value of counter is truthy, that is greater than zero, we declare another variable counter using the let keyword. 
and assign it a value using counter plus 1. What do you think will happen in this case? Well, we get an error, specifically a reference error. Cannot access counter before initialization. The same error we get when our variable was in a temporal dead zone. But we had defined our variable counter at the first step itself. There was no way the variable was in a temporal dead zone. Order of execution also appears correct. It seems JavaScript has lied to us. Hang on, hang on. The reason for the error is lexical scoping. Due to lexical scoping, the counter variable declared using the var keyword is not available inside the if block. Inside the if block, we have a new counter variable, the one declared using the let keyword. The counter plus one statement throws an error because declaration and initialization of the let statement was not yet finished, which means that the counter variable inside the if block is still in the temporal dead zone. The let keyword limits the variable's scope to the block where it is declared. Until the declaration is completed, the variable stays in the temporal dead zone. JavaScript is still playing by the rules. Let us look at another case to complete our understanding. In this very simple piece of code, we declare a variable counter using the let keyword. Then we introduce curly braces to create a scope. Within that scope, we declare the counter variable once again this time using the var keyword. What will happen when we run this program? Surely the code should work fine. The two declarations of the counter variable are in completely different scopes. Little do we know that JavaScript can be brutal. When we run this program, we get an error. In fact, this time it is a syntax error saying identifier counter has already been declared. At this point, you might be feeling gutted. But let me explain. There's a good reason to why JavaScript behaves this particular way. The var keyword triggers something known as hoisting in JavaScript. While hoisting as a topic demands its own video, the simple point is that the var keyword will result in the counter variables being hoisted to the top of the program, essentially making it a global variable. Since there is already a declaration for counter variable using the let keyword, hoisting of the variable because of the var results in duplicate declaration of the same variable. Hence, the error. You could potentially think about more such cases. The point, however, is that the temporal dead zone exists just like the Bermuda Triangle. And our job as a developer is to make sure that we are aware of how it works and design our programs accordingly. I hope this video will help you in doing that. And if it does, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon. You seriously don't want to miss the upcoming videos. See you next time with another topic and stay safe.